Hey, this is Ashley Davis from HeavyTuning.com and today we're taking a look at a new speed controller, in fact two new speed controllers from Scorpion Systems. One is the 90 amp HV Opto Isolated Commander Series 50 volt ESC and the other is the 130 amp variation of the same ESC. Uh, as I say, these are HV ESCs, so they have an operating voltage from 12 volts to 50 volts or 3S to 12S. They are opto isolated, so there's no BEC on these um, at all, so you've got to provide power to your radio system via another device. Now, these new BECs are uh, designed for use on the new trend of helicopters, really, the, the high voltage machines that we're seeing these days, um, like 50 size electrics that are running 10 to 12S, uh, and 90 size electrics running 10 to 12S. But of course, they'll also work perfectly well on 6S machines like the T-Rex 550 um, all the way down to 3S machines although these um, ESC are probably a bit large um, to consider for use on something like a 450 although they will go down to uh, 3S size of pack you wouldn't want this size of speed controller on your machine so I'd say these are ideal for machines from kind of 550 size uh, upwards uh, the 90 amp is actually quite a nice size, very comparable to other ESCs um, in, you know, on the market uh, in the same kind of price range. Um, they're not huge like they used to be. Um, the previous um, versions of the Scorpion ESCs before these were a lot bigger um, and these have been shrunk down in size uh, and are much more the, the kind of size you would expect um, this size of, uh, or this amperage of ESC to be. Okay, so if we take a quick look at the Scorpion Commander features, there's a safe, safe power up process built into the ESC, which means that unless your throttle is at the low position when you power up, the uh, speed controller will not arm. And it doesn't really matter where you put the, the stick, unless it's at the bottom, it's not going to arm. It has a loss of signal fail safe as well, so if your radio signal is lost, then the speed controller will go into a safe shutdown. There's an LED on the speed controller as well, which gives you indication of error codes and it flashes during startup to show you that uh, the speed controller is armed and that kind of stuff. As with most DSCs, there's a low voltage cutoff option and you can either have the motor cut out completely at the low voltage cutoff or it can go into a reduced power mode uh, to give you opportunity to land. It has a built-in current limiting feature so if you go beyond the specifications of the speed controller in terms of amps, it will current, current limit um, within the internal electronics of the speed controller to try and stop the speed controller from being damaged by going uh, over current. And it also has thermal protection as well built into the speed controller so that at 95 degrees centigrade, the ESC will shut down the power output of the motor by 50%. Uh, and it will flash a red LED uh, and until you actually land and uh, move the throttle stick to an idle position it won't allow you to go to full power again so if when you hit the thermal protection you'll cut to 50% power and you're forced to land and effectively let the speed controller cool down again um, below 95 degrees C before it will allow you to have full power again it has a built-in brake system for those people who, who like brakes obviously in helicopters we don't use those Okay, so it, uh, it also has um, aeroplane and helicopter modes and these uh, allow in heli mode you to run a, a really, really excellent governor um, which tracks motor RPMs extremely well, holds them extremely well. Uh, even in overrun conditions it will try and slow down the, the rotor uh, and of course when you load it it will try to um, keep the rotor RPM as constant as possible and I have to say it does work extremely well, uh, the governor. The other thing it's got is uh, an auto rotation uh, recovery mode. So you flick into hold, go into an auto, then you decide that you want to abort. When you flick out, it will do a faster spool up than it would do if you were just spooling up from an idle position. Uh, and that's also configurable. So you can say how long after hitting hold, it will do that faster spool up. Um, and once you, you're outside of that window, it reverts to the much slower spool up again. It's also got automatic electronic timing 
So it will work out what the optimum settings are for whatever motor you've attached to the ESC. But if you don't want to use the auto mode, there are also manual modes as well and you can set the timing yourself. Okay, so uh, let's uh, open this box and have a little look at uh, what's inside here. This particular speed controller we're going to take a look at is the 130 amp version, um, which I've not done any configuration of at all. This is exactly as it would come in the box. Okay, so here we have the ESC. Uh, this is as it comes packaged within the box. If I just take this out of here, you can get a, an idea of the size of this as the, you know, the 130 amp ESC. So that's it on the palm of my hand. And you can see that uh, you know, it's actually quite a reasonable size. Uh, it's not overly thick either. So if I turn it like this, you can see that previous versions of this speed controller were much broader in this direction and they've been really flattened out now uh, and made much more compact. It's got mounting uh, screw holes on it to allow you to mount it to your frames if you want to, or you can just you know, put a tie wrap over it as a lot of people do and you know, put some Velcro on the back or whatever. Um, this is the LED here. You can see uh, this flashes you know, when you're programming the device or um, if it needs to give you indications of certain flight modes it's gone into, this will, will flash. This can be unplugged as well, you don't need to run that. Across this end we've got the usual wires, nice size wires for the motor. Uh, and then the other end we've got our wires for connecting to our connector for the battery. Uh, and this little piece here, this is actually uh, an anti-spark device in here. There's a little resistor in here. So when you connect up, it very much reduces that you know, massive spark you get uh, and stops spark erosion of your connector. So that's what uh, that little thing there is for. Um, usual kind of capacitors in the end here. Uh, so this is the 130 amp version of the speed controller. Other things that you get in the box, this is the infrared programming unit. So you plug this between the speed controller's cable. So here's the speed controller cable over here. And you plug this into the infrared unit uh, in here that and then you plug this end into your receiver and then this allows you to switch between the little switch on here lets you switch between programming mode or flight mode so you can have that on there so that you could program it anytime or if you don't want it on there once you've programmed it you can take that off and store it in the box and just plug direct from the ESC uh, you also get in here a manual I've just realized that I've actually taken the programming card out of here, so I'll show you that in a moment. So you get quite a comprehensive manual. I'll expand this out, gives you a little connection diagram. And then uh, you've got quite a, a set of comprehensive instructions for programming it. A little picture there of the programming card, which I'll show you in a second. All of your various, various settings. Uh, and then on the other side, you've got some description of the lights and sounds it creates and the governor function. Heli mode soft start. It's actually got a very good soft start, actually. Um, in the past, some of the Scorpion speed controllers had quite an abrupt start to them. Uh, and this one's got a really nice soft start, spools up really, really well, doesn't jerk you know, into motion, um, does a, a really nice easy start, doesn't deflect your blades or anything like that, or cause the blades to fold. Uh, really, very good indeed. So uh, I'll just grab the programming card so I can show you that as well. Okay, so here we have the programming card. It has along the, the top the various functions that you can program. So you would press, I mean, for instance, LVC is low voltage cutoff. You would press that and you would see the LED flash to indicate that uh, on the speed control to indicate that it's um, seen that uh, input. Then you would put in, say, I don't know, 190, which would be 19 volts. And then you would press enter and then the speed controller will flash and beep to say that it's got that programming and accepted it. And then you can move on to the next function and you can program it in any order you want. Um, you know, there's, there's no preset way of doing it. You just press the function you want, put in the values you want, press enter and it accepts those values. So it uh, works very, very well. Um, the only thing you have to be careful of is because it's infrared, um, you can have some difficulties if you're in direct sunlight getting the IR sensor to be able to see the 
the key presses that you're doing. So it's best to uh, you know get get into the shade um, away from direct sunlight to do your programming, or or do it indoors. Okay, so that's the programming card. Um, the next thing I'll show you is the uh, 90 amp speed controller, which is a little bit smaller than 130 amp, and I've actually got that mounted to my T Rex 550. Um, that particular speed controller, I've run um, the entire flying season on it. Um, I have to say it's been an absolutely excellent piece of kit. Um, hasn't let me down all season um, and was used um, in the uh, 3D Champs this year, the UK 3D Championships on my T-Rex 550 um, to help out uh, Adam Turner who was competing um, and uh, unfortunately uh, ran out of helicopters to fly so he borrowed my T-Rex 550 with the Scorpion ESC and um, I believe you can probably find those videos online if uh, anyone's interested in seeing uh, that uh, T-Rex 550 flying with the 90 amp Scorpion um, ESC fitted to it. Okay so uh, I'll just grab my T-Rex 550 and we can have a look at the 90 amp speed controller fitted to that. Okay so this is the side of my T-Rex 550 the 90 amp speed controller fit to the side and uh, just to give you an idea of, of size I mean, I can put my hand in here I guess but you can see that you know it's no long no no bigger than sort of two I've got quite small fingers as well two finger widths in size for the anodized part um, and then you've got you know finger width that side and probably two finger widths this side in terms of size, it is smaller than the 130 amp. If I grab the 130 amp just to give you a, a comparison, this is the 130 amp, and you can see that the 130 amp is you know, a fair bit bigger in terms of size. Um, I think it's they're probably around about the same thickness. Um, yeah, that's my finger, about finger width again in thickness. Um, and it fits quite nicely bolted to the side of the T-Rex 550. That's the best place I could find for it. Um, T-Rex 550, you know, not being uh, overflowing with space for fitting speed controllers. Uh, and if you're going to fit, uh, you know, a, a very capable speed controller like this, they're going to be a bit bigger anyway. Um, and of course, in my T-Rex 550, I'm using a Scorpion motor matched to this speed controller as well. Uh, and it makes a very, very good combination. Uh, I've also at the back here got at the moment, as you can see, the IR fitted to it just for programming. Um, most of the time I don't have that on there. It's uh, one of this speaker control is very much fit and forget. You put it on, um, you use your throttle curves to set the governor speed. The higher the throttle curve, the faster it is, and just tack it for whatever speed that you want. Uh, and then you can take the IR receiver off and really never, never put it on again. Um, you can change everything you need to. Uh, from the transmitter in terms of the uh, rotor RPMs and it was only if you wanted to go in and adjust something like the vo low voltage cutoff um, um, or uh, how quickly it uh, does its slow start those sorts of parameters are the only things that you would really want to plug the uh, programming card in for and again they're pretty much things you do once and then that's it Okay, just to say a little bit more of uh, size comparison stuff, uh, just to give people an idea of the, the dimensions of these things. This is a Castle 85 uh, amp next to the Scorpion 130. So not comparing like for like here, just picking out a speed controller that I know a lot of people will be familiar with in terms of size uh, and showing it up against um, the much big, bigger in terms of amperage, um, Castle 130. Um, if you compare this speed controller to the Scorpion 90 amp, um, really quite similar in size. Um, the 90 amp is a little bit bigger than the 85 amp Castle, um, but they are really quite comparable in terms of the, the amount of space you need on the machine to fit either this or, or the 90 amp Scorpion. But of course the 130 much more capable than the 85, so yeah, a bit more size involved um, in that particular speed controller but as I say just a size comparison there okay so this has been an overview of the Scorpion SC the last thing I want to leave you with is um, just a very very quick chat about something that's very uh, dear to most people's hearts at the moment uh, and there's been a lot of fuss about uh, this year 
uh, and that is is this speed controller going to cause a problem in terms of you know having a failure which results in flames coming out of it um, and it's either melting your machine or setting fire to uh, a field or something like that now obviously there's another big brand on the market that's had really big problems with that this year i've run these speed controllers pretty much most of the year haven't had any issues like that they've been run pretty hard for 3d flights and i'm not aware of any of the scorpion hv range of vscs um, being the type of speed controller that will fail with flames coming out of it so uh, you can be pretty sure that if you fit this speed controller you're not going to have that particular issue okay so that's pretty much it uh, i'm going to wrap it up there uh, i'll see if i can get together some flight videos demonstrating some of the functions of these speed controllers particularly things like auto rotation recovery uh, and the governor modes um, but for the moment we'll just uh, go with this quick technical overview and talk about the features of the speed controller so that's it and see you again